AM Events are specialists in party wedding and event planning management. So for more information to make a booking, pop down to their showroom at Unit 2, Foundry Street, Atlas Industrial Estate in Glasgow. And we're on, and today's guest, we've got the beautiful Marilyn Wisby. Marilyn, you've got a, a bit of a crazy lifestyle. Your dad was Tommy Wisby, who was involved in the Great Train Robbery. Your ex-partner was Mad Frankie Fraser, and your godfather is Frankie For uh, Freddie Foreman. So it's a bit of a crazy circle, that. Um, how's things? Well, uh, yeah, that's a good thing what you mentioned, the three musketeers, I suppose, but... <laughs> Um, looking back, I, I, I believe I'm probably the product of the environment. Yeah, you kind of you get used to the, the craziness. Yes. But yeah. we'll go right back to the start and where you were born and how was your life growing up, especially with your dad being one of the most famous bank robbers in the world at that train point? Train robber. Train he, robber, He loved yeah. trains, James. Mm -hmm. um, he loved the Western um, films. I can remember in the 60s when we did get TV, be watching the old cowboys on the horses robbing the trains and I think it was inbred with him he may have you know wanted to well he ended up being one minus a horse <laughs> how old were you when your dad did the robbery I was nine years of age I was the oldest child out of all the train robbers children and um I felt, well I can remember exactly um I kept asking me mum Where's Daddy? She said, oh, he's joined the army. Until I, me and my sister went down to the shop in our roller skates. And years ago, they used to have the newspapers all folded. And across the newspaper was all the pictures of the robbers, train robbers captured. And I looked down, I see a picture of my dad. And um, went racing back to my mum. You told lies, you told lies, da da da. Um, I got all upset, you know. Why didn't you tell me? She was very young. You, you, would have, you would have remembered it then. You'd have remembered... Oh, yes. Because it was at 2.3 million, which is the equivalent of over 50 million today. Well, someone totted it up and said it was about 60 million. Yeah. And £100,000 was left in a mailbag. I, f I believe it was for one of the... Um, crooked policeman <laughs> yeah was it because i read about Detective. that yeah your, your dad's story because your dad sadly passed away three years ago oh, but yes. he's got his book out the wrong side of the tracks and they said that it was it was a police officer officer wanted money to get rid of evidence or to hide evidence yes for well, maybe um maybe that was it but obviously i wasn't there so how was the police and stuff them at the time when you were looking for your dad and um he he, he got a phone call or oh, no what happens butler came up as my mum was having her hair done and searched the gaff and f said what she said he said where's tom she said oh i don't know and then they found a, a postcard that my dad had sent because he'd gone on with um crowd of other fellas that weren't criminals. He went away with a butcher, a taxi driver, you know, all straight working friends of his. He kept his criminal friends separate to his straight friends. Where did your dad go after the night of the robbery? Did they go on the run? Whereabouts did they go? Well, to be honest, James, it's all in wrong side of the mm -hmm. tracks, the book, so I prefer... No giving too much away? No. Where can people get the book? On Amazon. Amazon. Or any other, you know, online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sells so for it's, it's some read it's some story because I believe your dad was the second person, the second last person of the train robbery gang to be who passed away. There's That's one right. left. Four never got caught, and Mister Big. But the, you know, there's um, other things coming out, projects. So. Um, I stand to the people that are producing them. How well connected was your dad in London at the time? He was very low, low profile, my dad. But 
apparently um, he was a, a career thief. I mean, prior to the train robbery, I never saw him hardly, to be honest, because the time he'd come in, time he'd come in, I'd be asleep getting ready for school, you know. He was a lovely dad. He yeah, never, what never, did your dad get? What did he get? 30 years? Yeah, he got sentenced to 30 years, and um, he was in... He, he was in Rule 43 for two years. And my mum campaigned, probably like once she got, once the sentences were um, given, she started campaigning. I kept really pushing it to the Home Office. Why, you know, 30 years? And they, the Home Office said, your, your, your husband won't do 30 years. He'll do 12 and a half. And that's, he was right. It was, you know. It was quite a big sentence for a robbery. 30 well, years. Yes. That considering they didn't have any guns, you know, um, what would they have got then if they had used guns? 30 years, I suppose. Why did they not use guns? Was that part of the plan? They had coshes, like my dad's but, team from South London used the coshes just to frighten the workers inside the... Um, Train, you know, mm -hmm. sorting place on inside the train. So when your dad got the thirty years, obviously you've been involved in prisons and going up and down and visits and that kind of life. When you met Mad Frankie Fraser, how did that one become? How did that become about? Can you ask me one question? <laughs> 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 Your Honour. The Scottish, we talk fast. <laughs> how did? Because do you think going up to the prisons all the time and? Spending a lot of time with your dad and that kind of underworld, that's why you kind of got the connection for a gangster like Mad Frankie Fraser? Um, no, not really. Um, it was when I, I sort of got older sort of thing. When I was younger, I didn't. he was put in Rule 43 and then when we did visit him, my poor dad and then was like, we was on a visit with a thick screen, you know, win like a window. Couldn't get hold of him and kiss him or he couldn't cuddle us, you know. So how did you meet Frank? Oh, that was many years later, mm -hmm. much uh, when I was 36. It's all in my book, Gangster's Mould. Apparently someone told me it sold over 300,000 mm -hmm. via the internet now. It's still selling. It didn't sell, hardly sell when I first brought it out because I think the climate of the book was a little bit, you know, <laughs> out there. <laughs> but people were buying it. How was how was the relationship with Frankie Fraser and Freddie Foreman? Because Freddie was friends with the Craze and Frankie well, I think was friends with the Richardsons. I think you should ask uh, Frank, uh, Fred that. But mm -hmm. if you can get past these all all these minders from what I've heard today. You know, I, I sent a message by a good Scottish friend of mine and they they couldn't get I couldn't get no answer from him because he was surrounded by hangers on. And yeah, you get that in that life though, eh? It's a kind of celebrity lifestyle as well. And I never try and glorify anyone because it's a fucked up life. Well, Eddie don't have Eddie Richardson don't have minders round him and nor, does, nor did Frank or me dad. Are you still ever speak to Freddie? Not really, no. Um, there was a little bit of going on at my dad's funeral and um, I did, it was out of bad taste on both parts. But if I had to, you know, um, oh, question was um, what I've, I've already answered, to be honest. We did Fred, you know, with the hangers on, you know. Yeah. Uh, you don't see Eddie surrounded by minders, so when is a good time to to say something, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very it tough... It didn't upset me. Uh -huh. It didn't upset me because, like, a funeral's a funeral. Mm -hmm. I mean, you read loads of people getting, especially in America, where the people get shot at funerals. So in that, as you say in that world, but um, I've let that go, to be honest. So when your relationship with Frank started, how old was he? Because he spent, I think, was it over 40 years in prison? Frank yeah. was in. Frank spent, well, I've, yeah, he, he came out doing the 20, and then he ended up get, 
doing something and getting 18 months for something so stupid. Was he ever, the nine years you were with him, was he ever in prison? I was with him 10 years. No, I kept him out of prison. It was well documented that mm -hmm. in the Times or some posh newspaper. Do you think you... Uh, at least Marilyn's keeping him out of crime. When he went from strength to strength after I got his first book published because it was meant for me dad. Do you think you kept them on the straight and narrow then? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. How was the relationship for the 10 years? Oh, it's a, it, was, it was a very funny relationship. Um, we was like good pals, you know. Um, as I said, I got his first book published because it was meant for me dad. When, and when he said, decided to stay with me, he said, the age gap. So I said, but Frank, oh, we'll worry about that bridge when we come to it. Because it was a 30 years age gap. I was 37, he was 67. And then finally when the age gap wore out with me, because I was like, uh, anyway, I said to him, I, I sat him down. I didn't even, you know, I had to be face to face with him. I couldn't just leave him when I decided to leave him. I said to him, Frank, I've, you know that bridge we was talking about? Well, I've come to it and I've met someone else. <laughs> how was if you, how was it that how was that experience it was, for him? It was hard for me to sit him down, mm -hmm. but I I had to be straight with him because I, I couldn't go f cheating on him behind his back. You know, I you know I respected him. He was so mm -hmm. kind to me. Looking back on it, I was an idiot. Really, I was you know. I, I, I really regret leaving him. But you would have only been, what, 46, 47? He would have been 77, 78? Yeah. But you did have that talk at the start that once she's come to that bridge that you would, you would tell him? Yeah. So I told him and... Um, How did he handle that? Well, not very good. Well, he handled it good. He, you know, he, he didn't hit me or nothing like that. He wasn't, he was never, he was never a violent person to me. Um, but... In the end, what was it? Um, yeah, it was quoted as me leaving him, taking all the furniture. Well, that was impossible because he was looking after someone that was on the run. So unless he was gay and they slept with one another, that was not true because he, he you know, I left him with furniture, free piece suite and mm. everything. How was the life for you mentally? How was that life with the constant police at the door, constant? No, it wasn't. Co no, was it not? No, no. The only time, no. <laughs> the only time. Oh, yes. No. One episode when I was with Frank, because it's in his book and my book, Gangsters Mall. His book's called Mad Frank. Was when there was a someone fell on a motorbike, got shot, or some something to do with. Uh, fella got I can't think of his name it's in all the books and they come round and gave us a spin and uh, f no there was nothing um, the only thing was like when we got done for the the drugs and that was you know mm -hmm. it was what it was sort of thing and to be honest um, black is black white is white because as a as high profile names, are very high profile, even to this day, they still get spoke about very frequently, especially the train robberies with your dad and the names that Frankie Fraser and even Freddy even Freddy's yeah. still as they live and he's how were how were you when uh, Frank passed? How was that for you? Did you go to the funeral or anything? Or were you there? Yes, I went to the funeral with my father and um, Malcolm, the co writer of his book. Went to the funeral. Yeah, it was sad. Um, I would have loved to have gone to make amends with him, which I did at one book launch down in Soho. Eddie was there, Martin Nicole. And um, he sort of forgave me, but his family didn't. So um, I would have loved to have seen him, and, you know, gone to visit him in the nursing home, but wasn't allowed to. Yeah, but Which was really, but you know, I mean, blimey, like I'm, they could have understood, but then again, some people just don't get it, do they? Yeah, it's life. Some you can. know, twin couples. It's what 
We discussed not. Yeah, everybody out from everyone. the outers. Yeah. How did your book? Beca- how did your book come about? Uh, Gangsters Mall. How did you, oh, yeah. how did it come about? Yeah. Well, seeing that I got Frank's book first, uh, one published. Um, he went on to write two other books, and we was with the editor of Little Brands, and he said, "Oh, she's got a book and half in a you know a story," and uh, she said, "Oh, send me some bullets." So I said, Todd, do you mean live ones? Or <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise it. <laughs> she said, no, it's a, a phase like... Bullet points. Bullet points. So I sent her 20. She said, oh, my God. She said, yes, come down to the... We'll have an appointment. And we, we, When I was with Frank, there were so many funny stories with Frank. And he was asked once to go and collect some money. Big chunk of it actually, and uh, he was like, um, I was, I said, What are you worried about? He said, I don't know, to ask to, for a bit of support, you know. Anyway, I said, Well, take me. I said, No one's gonna f- think it's big if you take an heavy weight with you. Mm-hmm. He said, Oh, he said, That's a good idea. Good job he did because we got finally got to the mansion, all he had to do was give a message and collect some money, let the person know that he he owed a certain person up north money. Anyway, the fella sent his person who stays at the gaff, come down, he must have gone running, well, he did, he went running back to the door and I said, it's Frank Fraser outside. So obviously, like, the, the police came along. I said, Frank? Because it's one of them electrical gates where you press and the phone, you know, mm-hmm. you can see the person on the phone. I said, the blue light's just coming down this country lane. <laughs> so you went there. So they said, Any, anyway, they fuzzed on the thing. They said, we're coming to, you know, the normal procedure, what they do. So he said, what, you know, he said, it's a man and a woman. He said, they searched my car. They searched me and Frank. Found nothing. And he said, turned around and said, Well, I can't see what's the problem. So Frank said, Well, I've only just, I'm only giving him a message. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, Well, yeah, that, it looks like it, you know. I said, Don't worry. Anyway, they went to the police. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like they frightened all yeah. of a sudden Frank, you know, and he was just de- delivering the message. Yeah. How did you and Frank meet? We met down at the um, oh Tim Pan Alley Club. Just got out, got acquitted, and I thought I'll go back to the Tim Pan, have a drink, and meet some people. And I was sitting on a stool singing crazy, and Frank was there with his partner, not his wife. Turned around and said, Are "You taking the piss it piss out of me?" I said, "No, Frank, it's me. I'm Tommy's daughter." Oh. He said. And then um, I said, why don't you come and see him? Because my dad got, just got charged nine years for cocaine. Anyway, Frank and I made a meet and we went down to see him. And uh, he forgot his ID. And all of a sudden, at the reception of Parker's, Frank's, he said, I can't let you in, you've got no ID. So Frank said, oh, he said... Can I speak to the top security officer or the governor, please? He said, tell him it's mad Frank at the reception because Frank had had a riot in there years years beforehand, you know, so the, the, the message come back, oh, let him in, let him in, just get him to sign the book. His old age pension card, you know, the mm-hmm. Freedom Pass. So the song you were singing, Crazy, he thought you were singing that about him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you went to go and visit your dad in prison, both of you. <laughs> so, the, so, so, yeah, so I must have said, just let him in, you know. Mm-hmm. In case he starts writing again. <laughs> so there are good people, but, you know, not so many jobs worth that you get out today. I mean, yeah. the year has completely changed. You're going to get that, yeah, there's the jobs worth, and even the grasses and the, the little bitches nowadays. And How were you treated then? Were you treated with so much respect, because people were feared 
because you were saying, Frank, it was people treat you. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Compared to now, I'm Billy No Mates and everyone hates me now, you know, because I left him. But that was, as I said earlier, that was between us two, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, um, which I'm glad I'm not a part of that scene no more, you know. Yeah. How, because you, you do singing yourself, you are a singer. In, did you opened a couple of nightclubs? Is no, that right? I don't sing. In, in, I only get up and sing in a, a pub over South London. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm going to get this project off the ground. Mm -hmm to do a song, maybe crazy, and donate it to, to the mental health charity, mm -hmm. like a big mental health charity that I know of that helped me many years ago. Because in that lifestyle as well, everybody wants to meet the bad get the bad guys. And I know you went to a couple of events, you were with like Noel Gallagher and Guy Ritchie. Was well, that opening a club? Yeah, it was the as it happens, it was the club that Christine Keeler met Profumo in, and I, I was and Frank was invited down there to sing. Um, I sang a couple of songs, and all the stars were there: Jude Law, uh, Noel Gallagher, who else? Oh, Camilla's relations. You know, the royalty. Yeah, they connected to them, and I understood that Prince Harry and. Prince William wanted to come, but they went, no, 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 you can't be seen with like mm -hmm. with your ex gangster in the. Who was whose club was that? This guy Richards and Paul Ad uh, Paul Piers Adams. It must have been some club, that. Right? Some yeah, names. Guy Richie was married to Madonna. That one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guy Richie's a big name. He does a lot of film di directing. Seems mm -hmm. a nice guy. Seems a real nice guy. Yes, he was. He was caught in Madonna at the time. Mm -hmm. He seemed a nice fellow because I spoke to him. How was ask? See, when you were nine and with the bank, uh, the train robbery and stuff. How were you at school? Were you, did you go to school? How were you treated? Well, the the teacher. I mean, there was one time that the teacher went. Today's news in class: train robber escapes. No, maybe it was when he. He climbed up on the roof in the prison, that was it. Because my dad was campaigning against the treatment and the conditions of the prison. And everyone had looked round, you know, that all the kids would say, Marilyn, like, it's your dad, you know, Tommy Wisby, you know, put it out there in front of kids, which I found was not nice. It was mainly, like, the grown-ups that were... Not very nice. Yeah, he's, again, that's what people do. They judge, don't they, Marilyn? Yeah. They, people judge and it must have been a difficult time or a difficult life at that it point. It was when my sister passed away. What know, age was she? She was 16 in a terrible car crash. Um, It was horrible. My, my father wasn't allowed out for the funeral, which I, f I thought was disgraceful. You know, Reginald Maudlin, uh, well, he was the... Prime Minister at the time, his daughter just had a baby, you know. Um, disgraceful not for him not to be allowed out to my, my sister's funeral. Yeah, why was that? He was allowed out for the hospital visit, but she was in intensive care, you know. And then um, later on, the Crays were allowed out for the funeral for their mum and dad. It was all like, it just shows you, like, murder compared to robbery it don't make sense mm -hmm. in this justice system of ours did they think your dad was going to escape or i, I don't think he'd be, like if he was handcuffed to two prison guards do you know mm -hmm. what i mean well how would he escape you know if he had to, they had the hospital swarmed around with armed guards when he went to visit why couldn't they done it at the funeral discreetly, within reason, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's sad, so... So that was a kick in the face for him, especially, you know, um, having to go in Kenny Sampson's, not Kenny Sampson's, Freddie Fr Sampson's cell, whose uh, son was in the car. Yes, you've been through some trauma then, and some... And Freddie got, like, apparently Freddie 
got beaten up and he had in prison. He had an epileptic fit and he, had to, um, he passed away inside. And then when my dad got near a move from Parkhurst to Hull, he went, they put him in Kenny, uh, Freddie Sampson's cell. And my dad said he didn't do me no harm when he was alive, so he won't do me no harm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean that. Even that was still like um, playing Ned games yeah. with me dad. Did you ever meet the Chris? I met I met Reggie. Um, me and Frank went down to see him on a visit when he was in Maidstone, towards his final, like finishing, a, like a sentence. Reggie, and um, we sat down in the visiting room. He had his open neck t uh, shirt on with a big medallion, and then. He said, hello, hello, and then he went off visit, talking all round the tables and when he got back, I said, here. I said, we come all this way and you're mugging us off, sitting round talking to other visitors mm -hmm. on the visit, you know. <laughs> I, didn't, oh. I didn't think uh, the Craze and Frankie got on. I, I thought they used to, I thought they were rivals. Not really, no, because Frank knew, knew, the dead more and see mm -hmm. them two grow up as you know when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Frank preferred Ronnie to Reggie, but then again, I I, I didn't go to Ronnie's funeral because I grew up with Georgie Cornell's children, so with respect to them, I didn't go to Ronnie's. There's a lot of politics in that underworld, and there's a lot of politics where you can't speak to one because. Other people are fighting or at war or um I think they're more like sissies today. They behave <laughs> like women. <laughs> they, the, the chaps that well, I call them the chaps, I don't call them faces. Mm -hmm. the, like the criminals years ago, they was like you'd never think they was criminals. They were skinny or but well dressed. There wasn't all these Big guys with tattoos and earrings and knuckle dusters, <laughs> plastic gangsters. You know who I'm talking about, didn't you? Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Whose yeah, yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, who, mum was a store detective, the paid. Because you, you try to actually, paper. you try to actually get a job, Marilyn. Did you not in a post office? Oh, that was hilarious, <laughs> James. It was like, <laughs> the local social security officer tried to. Um, in, like engage 20 of us from the North London branch for posting for the Christmas post and um, put my name down and uh, he said, come back on the Tuesday, the guy. He's scratching his head. He called everyone's names out. He said, I can't make it out. He said, I sat like facing him. I said, what's that? He said, your name's not been accepted. I said, I leaned over, I went, you don't think it's because my dad robbed it in 1963, mm -hmm. do you? <laughs> he said, well, that wouldn't have no, no re relevance to you. Mm -hmm. I, I, said, I, I said, well, you know, it was a big lump, you know, it was mm -hmm. a big train robbery. I said, no, as it happens, you're right, because I didn't have no convictions at the time. You know, just mine misdemeanours. Yeah, so he didn't get the job, basically which is understandable. <laughs> you try to get a job in a post office and your dad's just And robbed. I even tried to get a job with a small, in a small van for security call. <laughs> I tried every avenue of jobs as I was, you know, after I left Frank and still couldn't get a job. Why banks, though? Pardon? Why banks? Like money, because... The... It's a job, isn't it? Of course it is, but with the history, obviously, if your dad and seeing Frankie Fraser... People would have probably been like, ah, no, no chance, fucking no chance. <laughs> yeah, but that's not fair, is no, it? No, of course it's not, but you can understand your dad was one of the, robbed of one of the But they the biggest... say no discrimination, you know. Yeah, of course, but they'd not want to see it that did, way. It was nothing, what, you know. Yeah, but you did. I totally get it, but if your dad robbed a, a train which had post office money in it, and you've went to get a job in a post office, man. <laughs> They've like, had no fucking chance. Is this a wind up? <laughs> it's a uh, because again, it, how are you feel? How are you feeling now after everything? How do you feel mentally? Do you ever feel drained? Are you tired with all? Just what a fucking world when that was. Oh, that's a good question. As it happens, um, I do miss the old days. I miss the old characters. 
James. I've got to be honest. Mm -hmm. When I say characters, I mean people that run pubs. I mean, the pubs today are not like, you get told off as laughing in some of them. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, uh, just the characters. And years ago, the criminals then were like, they was polite. Um, they had manners, respect. Yeah, they, they'd go, if someone's got nits, they'd go around and treat the, 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 the wives, you know. Yeah, they I know. Don't do yeah, that no more. I know what you're saying. Like manners and respect. That people said, "Fuck, how can a criminal who's maybe robbery or murder have respect?" But I know what you're saying. They were pleasant to the parents. They always had respect. There was always morals. Where if there was a crime, it was. It's, it's weird to explain, but I understand what you're saying. They looked after themselves. They looked after the families who were in prison. So if somebody was to go to jail, they would look after the the kids. Or again, nowadays it's full of grasses and shite bags. It's people who think they're gangsters, people sell drugs and they think aut automatically they've got a badge to be tough. Yeah. They do as it was proper. It, things were sorted out as well. Not, there's, there's too much bitching nowadays, there's too much backstabbing, there's not enough loyalty. There's not enough loyalty. No. Which is tough, but then, again, in the other world, or in a life of crime, it still is a bad life. You're still hurting so many people along the way. It's everything, I always say, everything has a ripple effect. Like if your dad went to prison, that would have affected you, it affected your mum, it affects so many different kinds of people yeah. in that life. And it must be, even though that day and age when you were involved in it, with it, such powerful names, it must have been a buzz for you as well. You must have been some adrenaline rush to be in that, involved in that life and surrounded with the characters you were involved I, in. I wasn't involved, I was surrounded by them. Once I knew whose daughter... I belong to, you know, once I know I belong to it, sort of, um, I just took it as it came, you know, mm -hmm. sort of thing. Do you ever get to prison yourself, Marilyn? Do you ever get to jail or anything? Um, I was acquitted, I was acquitted um, for the cocaine, because mm -hmm. it was my flat, me and my mum. How much was there? How much coke? You'll have to read me book. <laughs> I'm promoting every book we can here. We've got Gangster's Malls. We've got Wrong Side of the Track, which is Marilyn's dad. That I'm actually, this looks a great book, by the way. When was this released three, four years ago? Yeah, it came out, I think it came out July. Yeah, three. Yeah, so this book is ago. about a two man. Years ago. Yeah, about a man who was involved in the most famous robbery of all time. It happened over 50 years ago and still captures the imagination of the world today. It's the story of the ambush of the overnight Scotland to London travelling post office express and has become known as a great train robbery. Post office express. I can't believe you try to get a job in a post office. <laughs> I think it's great, but <laughs> is um, what's the plans for yourself for the future? Have you got any more books coming out, or what do um, you see yourself doing now? I really want to concentrate on um, helping someone to write a script about my life, mm -hmm. and I'll involve a, 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 like my my mum in it, Frank, and your dad, dad, obviously, pre-train. I'm trying to get someone to to invest in it, mm -hmm. to pull up some money, so I, the rest another company will pull up the money mm. for this series. I want to do a mini series. Yeah. So honest. how can people contact you then for anybody that's watching that's you interested in your story? Age. I'll be your agent, not a problem. <laughs> I'll be your agent, not a problem. You know, because it, I've, I suggested it to a producer. Mm -hmm. We can get the first initial fee because you have to. it comes in stages, then you get other people to invest in it. That's of course. What, but you've got a story there to tell, clearly. It's more, it's, it's easier for, you know, it's... To write it down? To write it down. To, I'm a writer and a singer. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a, a conversationalist. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So So how can people get in contact with you then if they want to get involved and maybe help you out with producing a documentary or writing a new book? Yeah, if you if, if I leave you my email, because mm -hmm. I'm always i always watching your vids, so yeah, yeah. if you can do that. Definitely. Or... I Send me your email and we'll get the email to pop up. Yeah. And we'll do that. Because I'm coming in from a di different angle, you know. Yeah. But have you anything else you'd like to promote? Anything else you'd like to say before we finish up? Just that I'm going to upload crazy and I want to put some money towards a mental health charity. And what's your YouTube channel? It's Marilyn Wisby. And you were named after 
Marilyn Marilyn Monroe. Monroe. Yeah. Who was your mum's favourite actress? Yes. Yeah. Well, Marilyn, for coming on today and coming to speak to us and telling your story, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's it's a crazy story, it is, if I'm not going to lie. I've got a bit tongue tied, but yeah. Yeah, but that. (laughs) It's not as easy talking. It's not. It's not. I I, I, I mean, Frank was terrific when he was. Mm -hmm. On the television, he was terrific. He he had, he was very. Articulate. But he'd have had his interviews through the police for 50, 60 he years. Just, so they'd get used to it. I used to look at him when he used to have interviews and feel so proud about him. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I won't, won't keep your time, and I enjoyed it very much. No, thanks for telling your story, and I really appreciate it. And hopefully, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, James.